That's right, people. Spooky lights, spooky movie going season. Let's continue this fun journey. Kenneth Branagh's Hercule Poirot is back to solve yet another case, this time in Venice and at Halloween. Perfect for spooky season. Let's see how this one turned out. Now, before I jump into this review, if you love movies and you love movie reviews, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Plenty more movie reviews and movie-related content coming your way, so hit that subscribe button, and thank you in advance if you do happen to subscribe. Now, Kenneth Branagh, I think, is a very skilled director. I think when his talents are properly utilized, it's really impressive, and he makes some really solid films. However, these first two... Uh, Agatha Christie adaptations that he has made have been extremely mediocre in my opinion. I think Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile both did not really do anything for me. I didn't really find them to be very much fun. They were super predictable. They had great cast, sure, and they looked great visually. But other than that, I just felt like they really fell short in terms of like the mystery, thriller, intrigue, all of those departments. I just felt like it came up short. So it was safe to say I went into this movie with really low expectations, still trying to hopefully just have an okay time uh, with this detective and this new mystery that he's trying to solve. And in this movie, Poirot, he's in retirement. He doesn't really want to take on any new cases. And then this author from America, who's played by Tina Fey, she says, just come with me to this party. There's supposed to be some sort of seance. You know, just show me how this woman does it because I can't figure it out. You know, if she is a fraud, you need to point out how exactly she is a fraud. And he goes to this party and the seance happens. Not everything is what it appears to be. There's a murder and of course, Everyone's on lockdown. He needs to figure out who did it and why before more people are killed. So yeah, it's your typical Agatha Christie Poirot story. But how is it? How is it in comparison to those first two? Is it any better? Ladies and gentlemen, color me surprised. <laughs> I went into this movie with such low expectations and I actually had a really good time with this. Like, where was this in the first two movies, Brana? Where, where was this? This is a far different animal than those first two films. This is a movie that lives and breathes atmosphere. It actually has some visual panache, and it actually has a mystery that's worth getting invested in. Like, wh what? <laughs> First off, I think this is Kenneth Branagh's best direction in quite some time. The first two films, it just felt like he was hindered, his his style, his typical visual flair. I just felt like it really wasn't on full display. I think he was too preoccupied trying to make everything look nice and, you know, trying to deal with these huge casts that he kind of forgot to direct movies in the style that I'm kind of used to seeing him direct. The return of Dutch Engel Brana is really back here, and there's a lot more visual flourishes here in terms of the camera work and the blocking and just the atmosphere that he's able to set up. I mean, this is a movie that I loved the atmosphere. The production design is fantastic. The feel and tone of the film is pitch perfect, especially for a movie that takes place during Halloween and in a very dark, flooded Venice. He absolutely nails the atmosphere and he takes full advantage of it. I mean, we, we stay in this palazzo in Venice that apparently is haunted by the spirits of these children. And he really plays into the fact that this palazzo kind of has a mind of its own and is basically this haunted house. And I really love the camera work in this movie. It's different, it feels fresh. It's so refreshing compared to the first two films that felt like they didn't really have much visual style at all. But this movie really feels like Brana is behind the camera making creative choices and I really love that. Also, Brana's just great as Poirot. He was the highlight of the first two films. He kept those movies watchable. He carried those movies on his shoulders. And this time around, you could tell he's actually having fun as this character. There's some jokes here, there's a lot more levity, which I appreciated, but I really love the fact that we get to learn a little bit more about Poirot this time around and how he views the dead and ghosts and what happens when we die. I thought it was interesting to see his insights into all of that to kind of really address who this man really is. We got little hints of it in Death on the Nile, but we get to explore him a little bit more here, which I thought was really interesting. And the rest of the supporting cast here is pretty solid. I mean, you have Jamie Dornan, you have Michelle Yeoh, Tina Fey. I mean, everyone in this cast does their job. They know the assignment, they understand it. Uh, and no one's dialing it up too high. No one's dialing it down too low. Everyone here is playing their roles pretty perfectly. Their performances are definitely solid enough where you can buy any of them 
doing it. And that's always the best part of any sort of murder mystery where you feel like any of these characters could be capable of murder, even though this person might have an alibi or this person seems sympathetic and likable and, you know, uh, emotionally appealing. And I actually really dug the horror elements in this movie. I thought that uh, there's a lot of sequences where there's some great suspense, great tension. There's actually a couple jump scares in this in this movie that actually got me. I was I did not go into this movie thinking it was going to be a horror movie. And I'll, I'll say I jumped more in this movie than I did in The Nun, too. <laughs> Never did I think that was a sentence that, that I was going to utter this year, but here we are. And it makes me feel like Brana could actually be a really great horror director because there's some great horror flourishes here that I feel like his talents would be perfectly suited for, you know, a movie in that genre. So I'm all for it. I mean, in terms of things I didn't really care for, there are some conversations that I feel like could have been better written. I do feel like there are some scenes that go on too long. There are certain things that are very predictable. There are some times where the movie thinks it's far scarier than it actually is. And is it like absolutely spectacular? No, but especially compared to the first two, this is a huge improvement. This is the kind of Poirot story I want to see more of. This is the kind of movie that actually makes me want to see a sequel rather than those first two where I dreaded seeing another one of these things. So in the end, I'm going to give A Haunting in Venice, I'm going to give this movie three and a half out of five stars. I had a far better time with this one than I thought I was going to. It is a fun murder mystery. It takes Poirot, puts him in an interesting new environment. It plays with the horror thriller genre a lot more than the first two films did, which I thought was a really great change of pace. It's got great direction and atmosphere, terrific production design, solid performances, and, and a story that I think is going to keep you guessing up until the end for the most part. There are some predictable things, like I said, but for the most part, this is a really fun murder mystery that keeps you on your toes. It's not perfect, but damn, it is fun. So that is my review of A Haunting in Venice. Really hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope you take it into consideration if you are thinking about seeing it this weekend. And if you do get a chance to check it out, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the movie, if you loved it, hated it, felt middle of the road on it. Let me know. I always want to know your thoughts. And if you want to follow me on social media, I'm going to put my handles at the bottom of the screen as per usual. And the, the links to those will be in the description of this video as per usual. And make sure to follow my film podcast, Film on Tap, where every other week I get together with my buddies. We talk about movie news, trailers, we review movies, we go on weird, wild, hilarious tangents. It is a blast. So definitely uh, hit that podcast up. Links to that in the description as well. And until next time, everybody, I'm Tom Chattelbash, YouTube's most reliable movie critic.